afternoon. I'm Maria Satira. We continue to follow a developing story. Three children killed in New Bern. Our Ryan Peterson is live in New Bern right now leading our team coverage. Ryan. Hi, Maria. That's right. This is a tragic crime that's certainly mm -hmm. shaken the East. Three children ages 1, 5 and 12 killed in their home in this neighborhood here on Pastor Street in New Bern last night. The house is on again, Pastor Street, the 800 block. This morning, New Bern police held a news conference. Our team was there as we learned details of the tragic crime. Katie Harden joins me now. She's been following this story from the very beginning. Katie, what can you tell us? That's right, Ryan. We've been out here all morning, and when we first arrived here on the scene, investigators were trying to piece together just what happened last night. We're told that at around 11 o'clock, multiple neighbors called and said that there was a man with a knife. When police arrived here, they found that suspect with a knife and then five victims. The suspect, as best we can tell at this point, is a neighbor, uh, and they all knew each other, so this wasn't a random event. Investigators say 18-year-old Ela Dutu has been charged with stabbing and killing three young boys. The uh, victims, the juveniles, were all brothers, ages 1, 5, and 12. The boy's mother and sister were also injured in the incident, but police would not confirm if they were stabbed. The father of the children was at work at the time of the stabbings. Police say two had a machete-like knife when he was arrested. This is a horrific event for, for any community, and uh, uh, we're certainly going to investigate it to the fullest. Many in the community are shaken by the brutal attacks. Newburn police say when they arrived on the scene, two of the boys were already dead. The third victim died at Carolina East. The mother and sister have been released from the hospital and are in good condition this afternoon. Now the New Bern police and the SBI are continuing to gather more information to help answer some unfathomable questions. You can imagine in a scene like this or incident like this, there's a lot of evidence to collect. So we're continuing to uh, collect evidence and processing evidence. The question that everyone is asking today is why police are not releasing a motive at this time, but the suspect has been charged with assault with a deadly weapon with the intent to kill and police say they expect more charges to come later this afternoon. But you know, it's just been one of those things that everyone here in the That's community right. has been telling us they cannot believe the, the details that are coming out. Today. And, and Katie, these officers really aren't prepared to deal with something like this, especially certainly on a regular basis. So what's being done to help them? Absolutely not. Some of the first responders said that this is one of the most gruesome scenes that they have ever personally seen. And we're told by the New Bern Police Department that they have crews and um, counselors on staff to help those officers deal with what they saw. Um, so, you know, uh, taking a toll on everyone right. this morning. That's right. Katie, thank you very much. Now, this whole community affected by this deeply impacted. There's a strong Burmese immigrant population here, a rather tight knit community. That's a group of people our Josh Birch has been spending the morning with. He joins us now with the very latest on that and how they're coping and reacting to this event. Josh. Well, Ryan, there's an organization here right in New Bern and they're called the Interfaith Refugee uh, Ministry. They've been here since the early 1990s and I'm told that they've helped about 1800 of these Burmese Burmese refugees come here to New Bern. They say many of those people add a lot to the community. Many of them work and they had to pass an in-depth background check before being approved to come to the state. They say for a family that's already went through so much back in their home country, the events last night are just heartbreaking. Can't imagine how the family, both families feel, but our hearts as a staff just go out uh, to the families and we are, we are just really in shock at this point. Now, Hassan did say the Burmese community here in New Bern is very close. She says they have a psychologist on staff who will be able to step in and help debrief the family. And Ryan, many people are sitting at home right now. They're wondering how can they help these, this family? I asked Hassan just that question. She said the best thing that people can do right now is to send money to help them uh, worry about one less thing in the upcoming days and weeks after this uh, tragic event last night. Unbelievable. Josh and Katie, thank you both so much. And Maria, stay tuned. We're going to have much more throughout the day. In fact, you're going to hear from a woman who lived by behind the house where this happened. She said the mother and the daughter came running to their house, screaming frantic, crazy as this was all unfolding. And their daughter actually helped translate the events to police. You'll hear from her later on in the later newscast. For now, we're live on Pastor Street in New Bern. Ryan, back to you. All right, Ryan, Josh, Katie, thank you. And as we learn more about this tragic event, be sure to stay with us online at WNCT.com and we'll have updates for you there as well as more live coverage for you tonight beginning at five.